Well, typically when you're climbing, you normally use three points of contact, which is my maximum. Some are utterly shocked. It's not every day that you can say that you're on the British team. I've had a lot of shocked faces and an awful lot of people ask me how I do it. Of course, it's come a long way on the shortlist for the uh, Olympics. It's the closest that climbing has ever come to being an Olympic sport. If we do get put in to the Olympics, it will have a massive impact. Everybody looks at climbing and just looks around and just thinks, well, it's a very upper body dominated sport. It is, it is, you have to be really strong upper body, but it's very much to do with your core and, and your feet as well. Our legs are much stronger than our arms, so we try and put as much weight as possible on our legs. So the most important um, aspects really are your footwork and keeping in balance. To see these guys climb, it's just hugely inspiring, just thinking, well, he can do that with one arm, why can't I? It's learning for me as, as much as it is for them. Can you reach that hold? No, you can't. So what do we have to do? Sometimes they have to go over the top with their full arm and it's basically working out what they actually can do. I'm 39 this year. I've been climbing for around about 30 years. I came second with a silver, so that makes me number two in the world. I'm a congenital arm amputee, uh, lower left arm, as you can see. Um, it's impacted in various different ways on the social scale, physical scale. Obviously it sets a few challenges in life. I think the first challenge I came across was riding a bike, but it um, gets a bit boring once you master the art of riding a bike. So I uh, chose slightly more uh, interesting sports and I started my climbing career way back when I was a cub. You see a few holds, various footholds on the way up. The aim is obviously to get your feet as high as you can first and then once you've exhausted all your opportunities with your feet progress a little further with one hand as I have and a little assist with my arm as well, sometimes a big assist. There's been talk about the Paralympics because people mistake Paralympics and paraclimbing as sort of one sport which is a fantastic thing that people are prepared to adopt it to that level but due to various sort of legislation and rulings, it's not possible to just jump into Rio for 2016, sadly. I think the only thing it can do is grow. With a bit of encouragement from uh, myself, Robin, our up and coming little uh, man himself, Matthew. I'm Matthew Phillips, I'm 14 years old and I've been climbing for about a year professionally now. I have a upper limb deficiency on my right arm. I was born with it. It does hurt, that's why I have it taped up, because it does tend to rip the skin. It's very good for compression. You can sort of jam it in there and it will stay. You don't really need to worry about your fingers giving away. So yeah, I just jam it and then I can do what, generally do whatever I want with this arm. I've done a few parties climbing before this and I really enjoyed it. My mum suggested that we should go to um, power climb just to give it a go. And I went and I won bronze and well, I thought, why not give it a go as a full on sport? It does need a lot of improving. Of course, it's come a long way on the shortlist for the uh, Olympics. The British Mountaineering Council is the representative body for hill walkers, climbers and mountaineers the bid to be in 2020. And although there was a level of media coverage across Europe, it was voted not to be. So that's, it just came down to number of votes. There's a, been a massive increase in the facilities available uh, for people. So therefore, the actual participation levels for indoor climbing has increased. Recently, we just held the Youth Climbing Series final up at Ratho, and there was 420 participants. Uh, achievements that the Americans made on Dormal got such worldwide coverage and it inspired people to try something for the first time. It had a major impact over the next month after that in relation to people signing up for new taster sessions. Within the London and South East we're very very good and it stems from the improved climbing facilities. I'm a C4 incomplete tetraplegic so I have a spinal cord injury. I got it when I fell off a ladder. It affects my legs, they're really weak. I can move them a tiny bit. I don't really have a lot of abs, they don't work. I have no proper sensation from here down. It affects my arms and my hands, so my arms are weak and my hands, they don't get flat and they don't close properly. Everyone thinks you use your arms, you predominantly use your legs to push. You don't actually do all pulling. A lot of climbing comes from your legs. 
Now I can't really use my legs, I'm almost the opposite, I have to use my arms for the pulling and my legs for the balance and then because I've got dodgy hands as well I find it hard to hold certain holds. I won the World Championships in 2012 and the World Masters in 2014, so yeah, I'm reigning world champion. There's definitely an increase in popularity in climbing throughout disabled and able-bodied. I mean, it's one of the fastest growing sports. Uh, walls are popping up all over the place tenfold in the last five years. Uh, they're always full, but it's really busy. And even within the paragliding community, from when I started back in 2012, it's grown exponentially in the number of people that take part. I think Dornwall definitely had a massive impact. It's more, it's more in the mainstream or more mainstream media. Suddenly all my friends were like, when are you going to climb El Cap? All the non-climbing friends that I have. And it was like, not quite, but that everyone was talking about climbing. And yeah, the Olympic bid was a massive thing for climbing. And it's a shame it only got shortlisted, but then looking ahead to the future, it's really positive. So. I think, should it become an Olympic sport, it'll fly, but it's already pretty busy at climbing walls. With more funding, it would develop quicker, and on an international scale, it needs to be looked at to develop, because more competitions need to run to attract more people in a bigger audience, and until there's money to do that, it's not going to be there. The major issue we have with the elite level of performers in this country is that we get a lot of funding from Sport England, but they don't support elite performance. And then we've got UK Sport, who do support elite performance, but only those selected to go in the Olympics. So we're in a bit of a rock and a hard place at the moment. I want to be a we want to be climber full stop really, just get involved. Don't even consider what holds you back, just get on it and just go for it. Give it a go, everyone in the climbing community is really friendly. Give it a go, because you're never going to know if you're any good at it until you give it a go. If you need help, ask for it. If you want an adaption, ask for it. We've got a, a fantastic chance here, so we're hopefully going to take it.